Hi uh, guys um, and gals. Uh, I bought this TIG welder foot control. Uh, I got it off eBay second hand. I think my winning bid was 68 quid, I think. Uh, it's a tech arc one. But obviously, I haven't got a tech arc. I've got a thermal arc. And the plug, which plugs in here, is to replace the plug, which is there, which is from my original TIG torch because my particular TIG torch, and I'm sure a lot of yours don't have this uh, it's a bit of a posh one, it's a, it's a 26 torch but it's got the trigger to fire it but it's also got the power control, the current on here which unless you're I suppose a very very experienced welder uh, is a nightmare you, to try and control that while you're welding is just a no-no uh, so I bought this and plugged, well I didn't plug it in because I had to buy this plug, it's an 8 pin. I managed to get one from Thermal Art from um, East Coast Welding Supplies or something, sold me that. Uh, which I've connected on to the cable which goes to this. And this I knew was a 10k pot that were in it. Um, the guy never said it was faulty, uh, but my TIG welder only requires a 5k pot. So those of you that are electronically minded will know if you put a 10k pot in where a 5k pot should go, when I press that pedal, by the time it's halfway down, I'm on full power. So you've only got half of a pedal, which is no good to me. I wanted a full, a full control. So, and I also noticed while I were welding with it, it was stopping and starting. It were, it would, you'd, it'd start welding, then stop and start again. So obviously, the track and the potentiometer were faulty. So I've taken that off and I managed to get hold of a 5k pot which I fitted and it still don't work properly. It's strange because instead of when you try and set your current, your control knob is no longer available to use. But when I press my foot pedal down with the torch just there, just sat there and out of the way, uh, so it doesn't strike on anything. Instead of showing current on here, it's showing voltage, and as you press the pedal, the voltage rises. But I'm not reading my current, all I've got is my base current, which is uh, my base current is 10 amps. I've got it set up because I'm doing alley, um, and I wanted to set a maximum, say 80 or 85 or 90 or whatever I want to set it at. So then my foot control would be 80 or 90 amps full, fully depressed. And this welder's a 200 amp welder, obviously I don't want to be welding at 200 amp. So at the moment, when you press that pedal, from nothing, it starts at 10 amps when it fires up, once the switch clicks in. Uh, and when you floor it, it, it's 200 amps, which is no good because this is what sort of thing is happening. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm no good at welding, I'm only just starting, so please forgive this lot. This is the sort of things I've been doing. That was my first day, <laughs> alley welding. <laughs> that was my first day. And my second day, I got a bit better. But we were getting too hot, and I should have stopped and then started again, so you can see here. Got too hot, we welded from there, got along there, got too hot, it starts to sink. Should have stopped there like some gas purge out and then waited to get it to cool and started again but I didn't you know anyway back to what I'm doing is this pedal I'm going to pause the video open the pedal up so you see what I'm doing inside because apparently to make it work and this guy has put this on which is very good it's some guy who's modified one to fit uh, and basically I have to put I've bought this switch here I've got to put this switch on the side here and wire it in series with the switch that's in there so when I press the pedal and switch that off the machine won't start and apparently then you get your current showing on your meter and you can set, your, you can set it up to full depression and then you can adjust it on the, um, on the front of the welder that's what I've been told so I'm going to pause this whip cover off show inside it Okay, that's the cover off. 
so that's my cable coming in that's my potentiometer which I've changed which works on like a little belt it just as you squeeze it I'll show you it just goes around I'll have taken the spring off, I've pulled the spring off while I've done it but basically this just turns as it goes round and that's the on off switch apparently I've got to stick this one in series with it so I'm going to mount that on the side somewhere and momentarily switch it off to set your current up and then you put it back on again I'll see if it works but that's using a tech art pedal for a thermal arc welder or an e-stab or a power weld let's get this right there's e-stab, power weld I aren't even sure if it wouldn't do the r -Tech as well so this should do any of those welders just a different plug on the end mine's an 8 pin plug and some of the others are different I'll let you know ok so I've fitted that switch on the side so when it's in the off position I can set up the machine if everything's going to work like they say it is and then you just simply switch it back on and then you've got your your switch coming in through your one you fit what you call it we'll call it s1 uh, and through the foot switch s2 i've put my spring back on there so you can see actually how this works now if i press it This is not all made, this is tech arc, so that bit of belt there, it's just something they've come up with. It's a piece of, piece of fenner belting, isn't it? A tooth timing belt they've used and just chopped a lump off. But I suppose it works fine. Gives you full potentiometer movement. To back off. So I'm going to put it all back together and give it a try and see what happens. Okay, so that's it back together. with the switch in but uh, unfortunately the legend's upside down and you can't alter it because it's got a little pip in here and the, without filing it off I couldn't have turned that round but uh, it must be sort of American style because I think American switches are always up for on but I wanted this down for on simply because I'm going to turn it off I'm going to do my uh, current regulation and then I'm going to switch it on which will put my other switch back in line again. I wanted it down for on, just in case my foot ever slips off or anything, and I knock it. I didn't want the switch to be up for on. So that's my logic. We'll see where we go. I'll add all these videos together when I've done. I'm gonna try it now. Okay, so this is a bit noisy because I've actually got the welding machine turned on. But uh, what was happening before, with the foot pedal switch turned, let move it over. With the foot pedal switch turned on, when you press the pedal, which I'll do now because the torch is safe, so that's on. If I press it, you purge your gas, and that's the turn, which is zero because there's nothing, and all you get is your voltage moving, which is what we're getting before. That's not what I wanted. That was no good. So I turned the foot pedal off, so now it won't fire the torch off because the switch is disabled. And when I press this now, I can adjust. First of all, I'm set on F, that's my frequency, 105 hertz. Let me go to free flow, hot start. My base current, 10 amp. So, that's my base current. It's actually what it'll start at when I fire it up. As I press the pedal, there we go, that's gone up to 96. See if I can hold it down and adjust it higher. If it's a 200 amp machine, So under down, but let's let, let go again. Look what I've done here. Sort of 
Sorry guys, I've zoomed in by accident. So we're going to let go of the pedal. Up we come, up we come. Drops back to my base current at 10 amp. Let's see now if it goes back up to 200. There you go. Right, so when I've got my foot pedal hard down, I'm overweight. I'm going to be welded at 200 amps. I don't want to weld at 200 amps. When I'm doing alloy, probably this thin stuff I'm doing, maybe 85 and 90 tops. So I want to set it so when my pedals are down, the maximum is 90. So let's do it. Pedal down. And adjust. So there you go. So now I'll let go pedal. I've got back to 10. Full throttle to be 90. And it is. That's brilliant. So now when I weld, I can't go over 90 amps with that fully depressed. That's the beauty. I'm going to turn it off. A noisy fan on. I don't know if you could hear all that. I hope you could. But yeah, basically that's set up now. So technically I'll be able to weld a lot better than what I did with this. Because when I was pressing my foot pedal down I was getting 200 amps here. Which was just getting too hot. I mean it's not that thick in this stuff. It's only a thin alloy. It's just some scrap that I bought. That welding bad, that's without filler rod. Uh, I wanted to get one of those nice welds that you see on a motorbike frame and stuff, you know, when people have made these lovely air boxes and stuff. Uh, so, um, 68 quid it's cost me, a 70 quid switch, uh, and I think it's going to work. So, I hope it helps any of you guys uh, that have got a thermal arc, ESAB, power weld. Um, and I think they are tech if you want to do that I think that's how you set it up some of them are different I know some at welders, millers and stuff I think you just turn your maximum on there and that's what it is I don't work on this machine you've got to have the foot pedal plugged in and you've got to unswitch it so it doesn't turn on and depress the foot switch and do your controls get your settings where you want them and it'll stay there that one on the AC um for alley but DC is exactly the same the only settings that change is when you start using uh, HF lift TIG it's on, if you put it on stick basically none of this works it's just your current uh, and that's it for stick welding because you've got no purging things good little welder this uh, 2250 pounds to buy roughly um, I have seen a cheaper one, brand new, some welding company, but I have a funny feeling when you ring them up, you don't get out with it and you have to start buying out bits to go with it. Uh, what I did like about this, you've got a purge, so you just simply press that and it purges your gas through, so you don't have to pull the trigger and start firing it up, that doesn't fire the machine up. It, all that does is purge the gas through. It's quite good. Plenty of settings, there's also a pulse weld on it, so which I could have actually set up on that piece of alloy or welding I could have set it to pulse on off on off and you can set how many seconds from nothing to point one of a second right through to something like 10 20 seconds I don't know what it is but it's quite high uh, so you can pulse on and off on and off on and off uh, I've got my trigger set to 2T you could have it to 4T but that means you've got to press it twice and with a foot pedal that won't work too well wave balance I have set at about 30% for cleaning the alley again on DC you don't use that good it's a damn good welder I gave a guy 700 I think for it 700 pound they bought it for um a, a, it was um, a company that does conservatories in aluminium and they'd got a new guy and he said I use a TIG welder and they had an alloy MIG welder and they got in this machine brand new and unfortunately the guy couldn't use it, he just could not set it up, it was so complicated. So they went back to the MIG and that went in the corner and it never got used, it's been stood there ever since. 
probably a couple of years. Um, so I give them seven hundred pound for it. Brilliant! I'm really chuffed. <laughs> Better than buying a Chinese one. And I know sometimes I, I was heading that way, like four hundred and fifty pound Chinese one. But I've had two TIG welders before, a Chinese ones, and they were DC only for stainless and mild, and they were a great machine. Uh, but both of them went pop on me just one day using them and they just stopped and I took them to one of these places that do repairs and they just said, well, sorry, it's Chinese, we don't touch them. And I took the cover off and inside it were a right mess. The bits of wire and capacitors stuck everywhere. they like it had been bodged and bodged, but they were brand new from China. Um, I have no doubt this one's made in China, but it's made under licence for Thermal Arc, which I believe is something to do with Viking products or something. They're American, so it is a good quality machine. Okay guys, hope you uh, get some benefit from this video. Hi right, guys, this is just an add-on for you. If any of you guys have got um, a thermal light machine or ESAB, this might help you. Uh, I found this on the internet. So you might want to get your phones and photograph it. I'll try and get you some clear shots on it. Let's uh, do half at a time. So you can see your eight pin plug and there are the connections. That's the original power weld stroke thermal light torch with the variable control on it, which is like that. It's showing a 340 ohm resistor in there. I don't know whether I'll need to put one in, but we'll see. But if this will help you, you can maybe photograph it. And this is using both the torch and a foot pedal and wiring them together you do that by putting a nine pin din plug idea like this and swapping over but I didn't do that I just I've got a different torch I've my original torch and then I've got this other one if that'll help you as well there try to hold my camera as still as I can okay Right, just an add on really, just to tell you the foot pedals worked fantastic. I'd set maximum current to 85, minimum at 10. Uh, and I mean, I've done a lot of um, stainless welding and mild steel, but I've never done alley. So, yeah, I'm getting there. You know, it's gone from, it's gone from this using the normal torch so which which is this as i've shown you uh the 26 torch with the adjuster on and i've taken that off and i've gone for a little nine which has no trigger or anything on it it's just a little torch which is great because you've only got one single hose on it so you don't have any problems with uh, the weight so yeah uh i don't think i've done bad that's without any filler rod that with that weld and that's with filler rod joining it together. I'm quite pleased with myself, really, for my first few tries. I can only get better. They say the hardest thing is, is being smooth, and I bought this thing. It's like a finger that goes over the gloves, uh, your little finger, and it, it slides. So you set yourself up on a, a block or something so you can slide on it, so you don't have to keep moving the torch with your hand. Anyway, again, hope it's helped you guys.